Today we're going to play the veto thinking game. So what you're going to need in order to play this game is your dog, some kind of object that hopefully the dog cannot move through. I have a big cone that we use for training a lot here at the office, but you could use pretty much any object, a trash can, a cooler, a small table, a vacuum cleaner, really it just has to be something that the dog cannot travel through and you're going to place that right in front of you. Now you could do this game seated in, let's see, like a chair. Uh, I'm sitting on the floor because my dog is rather small today. What I'm going to do to begin this game, oh I also have a couple of frisbees, you can substitute dog bowls or paper plates or honestly you could just put the food on the floor but I like to have a target for my food, is I'm going to start loading the pieces onto the frisbee one at a time to give my dog a little bit of a warm up because he's kind of a young dog and I want him to have a little bit of a like spark at the beginning of this game. So he's going to have to figure out to go around the object that I placed in front of me in order to get to the food that I placed on the opposite frisbee. And that might take him a second. You can see he's kind of sniffing around. He's kind of a goofy little dude, so this might take him a moment for sure. But once he figures out to put the food or to gain the food that's over here, I'm going to put food on the opposite side. You good, bro? Wowza. Okay. And I'm going to do that maybe two more times, one piece on each side. I'm going to let him hear that click of the food going onto the frisbee. Good oh boy. Now I'm going to stop helping him with the food on the frisbee before he travels. And I'm going to start only adding the food on the frisbee after he travels. So at any point, if he decides to go towards the center, which is my marker here, um, I'm going to put a piece of food on the opposite side. The other thing that I could do to just really subtly help my dog out is I can look in the direction that, that I want him to move. Wow, this guy's a smarty. So this is going to go quick with this little guy. So our next step, which I'm going to go ahead and show to you because he's really like kind of ramped up in speed, <laughs> is that one of the times that he's out, I'm going to move my cone out just a little bit. Still going to kind of preload my hand with food. So that now he's traveling maybe an extra like five inches around the cone. Traveling through the space between me and the cone is not going to get him anything. So I've decided to move in an extra five or so inches and now he is not getting anywhere with this game anymore. He's not getting any payout and he's definitely still trying. He's really into the food, so he's going to keep going and going. I'm going to wait until he figures out to travel around the cone. Or if he totally gives up, which I'm going to wait like a good amount of time for. If he totally gives up, I'm going to bring the cone closer to me. So again, with my eye contact only, not with my words, not with my body language, except for my eyes, I'm going to start looking in the opposite direction. Oops. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring my phone closer to me. Just those five or six inches. Let's see what we got. That's it for him. He does not get anything from my hand right now. He's trying. I'm looking in the direction that's at the opposite side of the cone for him.
that's kind of how this game be sometimes. So occasionally our dog is going to get stuck and they might even get a little bit frustrated. I like to give them as little input as I possibly can, meaning I'm really only looking at the opposite plate. I want them to work this out on their own. That's the intelligent part of this game. That's the part that um, satisfies their mental capacity. Good boy. And now we're back at it. So again, because he's doing so well at this level, I'm going to bump out just a couple inches. See if he gets it. Good boy. I'm gonna go ahead and bump it out again when he moves this time. So cutting through gets nothing. Good boy. Nothing. Something. Nothing. Nothing. Something. Good boy. It's a really nice game to do if you really don't want to do a whole lot of thinking yourself, but you want your dog to do some thinking. You could do this while you're watching TV. You could do this while you're having a conversation with somebody. You could do this while you're on the phone. It doesn't require any talking at all and does wear your dog's brain out quite a bit, especially in the beginning. Now I will say in the long run, this game is a little more physical exercise than it is mental stimulation, because you can see the more your dog knows about what's going on, the less they're having to think, right? He's moving really quickly. I wouldn't say he's thinking a ton anymore, but some dogs take longer to get to this stage. He just really likes food, so he's willing to think for it. Moved it out again. And I'm just going to wait. Good. Good boy. Last one. Yes. All right, and that is the Vito thinking game.